An average man in Nigeria is living on $1.9 a day. You look at the population of the men living in this amount, it's about 44.7 million Nigerians. And if you add the women population to it, you have about 43.7 women living in abject poverty. And that was why this election meant a lot, not just to Nigerians, but to Africa in general. Because what is happening within the African community is that Nigerians are immigrating on a daily basis. And they are moving to the other countries. Anywhere you can find yourself, for greener pastures, you go. But if you go back to 1980s or at the inception of independence, it wasn't like that. There's the time we have Ghanaians all over the country that are the one doing the labor job. I remember as a young boy going to school, I went on holidays somewhere in Onitsha, and all the workers from my uncle were Ghanaians. At the point, that's all we call Ghana must go because things started changing and Nigerians needed the jobs to survive. That is where we went down the drain and things changing. We start producing individuals who want to lead by all costs and the greed. You see, does this say, there's always this saying that comes up with leave the black man in charge and give it time, everything scatters. And that is the situation that came up in Nigeria. With time, things changed so drastically that, like my brother said, the dollar was, Nigeria, Naira was bigger than the dollar at all costs. I think it was one dollar to point zero seven, one Naira to point zero seven dollar. I mean, dollar and the, the pounds. But gradually, it started going on. 17, 32, 74, 155, and today we have 775. In fact, the Naira is highly devalued that if you take 250 rands, you get 10,000 Naira. That's how bad it is. So that this election was a very big yardstick for all of us Africa to see because Nigerian democracy is an exemplary one for all the countries within West Africa. Nigeria has always been the yardstick to measure the progress in Africa. That's why all along they were the giant of Africa. But today I don't know if that term is still being used. This general election, let me give the analysis. Um, the INEC chairman, the Independent National Electoral Commission, the chairman, Mahmoud, was in Chatham House and he was asked, what is the plan for this election? He said this would be the most credible and fair election that Africa has witnessed and the world probably will emulate from this. Nigeria spent over hundred, what am I saying? Okay, well, I'm not very particular about the amount of money that was spent to get the electronic device that makes it possible as I am here, if I upload something on my phone, on WhatsApp, on a platform that is a group, everybody will see it immediately. Nothing has to be hidden. So they have a machine called the Beavers, which is supposed to be, once the election is done, everybody see the vote counted and the figures are uploaded on the beavers. The world was clapping. When we talk about the election, we boast on the fact that we know it's going to be the most credible one that Africa has seen. It's going to be the most credible election that Nigeria has witnessed. But the world, he went to Chatham House, he talks, elaborate about this Beaver system. It's called the bimodal verification assessment system. Now, once you come, you put your finger, it's accredited, your face, and you, you vote. Automatically, your vote is uploaded. Anyway, on the election day, a lot happened. People voted, accreditation took place in some voting centers. Nobody, there were no electoral officers. Some came in the evening just to destabilize the voting. Mind you, 93 million Nigerians registered for this vote, to vote in this election. At the end of the exercise, 87 million 
was confirmed to have their PVC. And after the voting exercise that declared them um, the um, the supposed winner, anyway, I put it this way: <coughs> the winner is only 23 million Nigerians that voted. Where are the 87 that has their voters card? So 10% of Nigeria of the people that are eligible to vote voted for one candidate, and he won to rule 2 million, 200 million people. You see, that is madness. It's not possible. So the election was highly flawed, and that affected the political, that the political economy of Nigeria because it's mad with thuggery, corruption, vote buying, intimidation, ballot box stealing, and name it. Nothing was functioning anymore. Nigeria is a federal system of government where you have the president and you have about 36 states with the federal capital territory. All these have governors that are ruling them, but the executive power is resting on the president. And the most contested position was this president. But he was mad with conflict. Because as we stand now, even the INEC is afraid to even show the world what is in their system. Because from the technical part of it, the system is designed in a way that even if you upload now and the system is shut down, it's not on. Once they put it on, just like WhatsApp, all the information will start flooding in. And you can't control it. So in some places, where, when they shut down the server, in some places, people try to upload offline. It was hanging on there. But the moment they own the system, it is the results were coming in. Now it become a problem because the two parties that were disenfranchised has already gone to court to ask that they want to view the election materials so that they will be sure that if you say that I lost, at least show me what does the saying in my place that when you pull a buck from a dog, at least you show the dog so that you know that you're not victimizing him. But in this case, the reverse is the case. They are hiding what? To show the world what they actually did. We have seen situations whereby after the election, collection officers went and tipped the numbers to change it. Even when they tipped it, they put figure, they forgot to change the words. Mm. All these were everywhere. You look at the international observers, all their reports are showing negative. The election is not even supposed to be counted. Talk more of declaring somebody the president. I will be rounding down so that I don't take much time. We'll still have more time to talk. And I see here that the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa, it goes down beyond... Some of us were not born when Nigeria and South Africa started a wonderful relationship. In the post... Uh, uh, well... Yeah, in the, during the apartheid time, in 1960, during the Sharpville incident that um, 72 blacks lost their life, Nigerians just got their independence. So one of their major foreign policy was to do what? To fight for the colonization of Africa. So they stepped in to fight for their South African brothers. By 1961, they got the Commonwealth to sanction South Africa. And also, they got the Organization of African Unity to do what? To ban international trade with the apartheid South Africa. And that is the structure that Nigeria was built on. Humanity, cohabitation. But along the line, we start getting a wrong. Even the formation of NEPAD, NEPAD as the Partnership of uh, African Development, the new Partnership of African Development, these were spearheaded by South Africa and Nigeria. Tabo Mbeki was in exile in Nigeria in 1976, and he formed a relationship with President uh, Mohammed, I mean, Babasanjo, then, and the Yaradua. So, as history will have it, both of them were president at the same time. 
and they know that the creed is to free Africa and liberate it and bring it to a 21st century world. So they went over the world seeking for debt relief because the West trapped Africa with debts and we're not paying it and our interest is continuously increasing. Are we going to ever come out of it? But these two men, knowing each other from way back, moved on to fight for Africa. Some were cancelled. They formed NEPAD, the New Partnership for African Development. It has helped a lot of African countries so far. At a point, they formed um, the, binational, the Binational Commission between Nigeria and South Africa. And I think that's what gave birth to the South African Nigeria Chamber of Commerce. This was to integrate trade, political relationship, economic, and a whole lot between the two countries. And that is why there was a mass movement of South African companies between 1999 to 2007 in Nigeria. You talk about MTN, Central Bank, and a whole lot of them. They got into Nigeria, and they're doing very well as of today. And that is the kind of relationship that we had, and we have, with South Africa, regardless of the what is happening within the society today. But these are things that are human elements that will be dealt with. You know, between 2022 alone, South Africa imported goods worth $2.26 million from Nigeria as at the current um, statistic from Comtrade, the United Nations Comtrade. And um, Nigeria also is importing from South Africa. It's a vice versa. I think in 2001, Nigeria imported goods worth um, $530.7 million from South Africa. And there has been continuous trading between the two countries. So this election that happened recently in Nigeria is an eye-opener for every African country. The truth is that corruption is rife in Africa, in every country. Nigeria is like the screen where everybody is watching. If this works in Nigeria, where you have a population of over 220 million people, will it not be practicable for me to do it in my own country that has less populace? I will succeed if it succeeds in Nigeria. And that is why we are saying now that this is the time for us to get it right. Not just as Nigerians, but as Africa. Because if this trend continues, it will never stop. In the next 50 years, we will still be having an election where people are called to come out to vote. And even before they voted, they have already decided who is going to rule. That is not democracy anymore. So this is an African affair, it's an African matter, it's a Nigerian matter. And we must all rise to condemn that, so that a new Africa, a new Nigeria, can be bettered. We are hoping that the court will do the right thing, so that transparency will be the order of the day. Otherwise, as I can tell you right now, that Nigeria is a keg of gunpowder. It's just waiting for a matchstick to strike and it will explode. And when it happens, I'll tell you the truth, the whole Africa will be a mess. Thank you. Thank you very much.